A warm welcome to each one of you. This is the Naomi Talk Show with yours truly, Liz Kenya, and Kama Kawaida. I want to appreciate each one of you that has checked our content and we truly really hope that you've learned something, you've been inspired, and you've been equipped by what we get to share on a regular basis. Today, I want us to reflect back. There's one time we were discussing about how to prepare yourself as a woman to get pregnant or to carry that pregnancy. Now, I hope you still have your notes, because me, I have mine. And there are a few things I wrote, and I'm sure uh, our guest, our expert in this area will add more to it. We talked about if you really want to get pregnant, of course, after marriage, every woman wants to get a baby. That one we, we agreed. So you have to remember a few things, like you have to detox, you have to avoid very strong scented perfumes, uh, deodorants, you know, all those things that we use at Kama Wanawake, Namafuta. You have to do some workouts. And of course, once the baby is loaded in the system, you have to do an antenatal clinic. I'm doing very well so far. Yeah. Very well, yeah? I hope you still have your notes so that to end the from there. You have to get your supplements, and of course, she got to explain why you need your supplements. You have to maintain exercise, and remember to constantly talk to your baby. Happened your tuliachia. I hope you can remember from that point. So we want to pick it up from there, and of course, do today we are looking at breastfeeding and uh, complementary feeding. But before then, allow me to allow and to introduce our guests, bring our guests back, and do a recap. Kidogo tu, from her point. Kuna vitu nimeweza kuwa nimesahau hapa, ama tuliachilia, before we go to breastfeeding. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Liz. Mm. Once again, my name is Kadomi Mutembei. Mm. I am a pediatric nutritionist. Mm. Yes. So, kuna kitu nimeachilia hapa? Kwa hiyo no, recap? No, you've done a good recap. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So someone uh, asked, eh, there's a question that we needed to, to, to look at. And uh, wow, why is it escaping my mind? I think to Taipata along the way. So breastfeeding today and uh, complementary feeding. What do you have to say about it from the expert point of view? You being the expert, I love to talk with Maswali. Okay. Mm. So breastfeeding, uh, when it comes to breastfeeding babies, the recommendation for human babies is they should be breastfed exclusively for six months. Mm. That is from birth up to the age of six months. Mm. Exclusively means you're breastfeeding this baby without giving anything else, mm. only breast milk. Mm -hmm. And usually breast milk for those six months is usually adequate to support the healthy growth and development of the baby. Mm -hmm. So there is no need to add anything uh, to the breast milk unless a medical doctor mm -hmm. uh, recommends maybe a medicine, maybe the baby is unwell and there is medicine recommended. But when it comes to the feeding, breast milk is usually adequate to provide and support health, uh, healthy growth and development for those six months. Mm. Uh, what I would say about breastfeeding is usually it's a natural process. All mammals, not just human beings, all mammals, all, uh, mammals are those animals that suckle their young ones. Mm. They are born with that ability. The female mammals, once they give birth, mm. they are born with that ability to suckle their young ones. Mm. And it is similar to humans. Once a mother gives birth, uh, breastfeeding is a natural process. Mm. Even the baby that is born, they are born with those instincts and the reflexes of breastfeeding. Mm. If you just put a newborn baby on the mother's tummy, yeah, yeah. they will start having those uh, circling movements mm. or sounds, and actually the baby is usually able to move towards the breast. Mm. So without even putting the baby on the breast, some of the baby will move and look for the breast immediately after birth. It's a natural and uh, inborn ability. You say it's natural, but for most mothers, it's a struggle. Yes. Actually, it's very painful. A part of postpartum depression, I think some of those things begin from there. Because once a baby comes, you go two, three days, you've not produced any milk, and your baby is struggling. So what probably causes that place, that, that kind of a situation where the mother is not able to produce, yet you're saying it's a natural yeah, process? Yeah, it's a natural process. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that I've observed is uh, when, once the mother is pregnant, especially first-time mothers, mm -hmm. they are not well prepared on what to expect, mm. 
or what how they should breastfeed their babies. Mm -hmm. So there's an assumption that a woman will know how to breastfeed, yeah. and it is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, most women actually that first experience is the first ever they have ever seen. Mm. There are women who have never seen a baby breastfeeding or they don't know <laughs> how you hold the baby, how you latch the baby. So mm. we assume that it is known and it is not known. Mm. So I usually encourage teaching the mother breastfeeding techniques before she gives birth, during the last semester. She should be told everything that she needs to know about breastfeeding. Teach her to latch the baby, mm -hmm. teach her what to expect the conditions that she can expect when uh, breastfeeding the baby. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like painful nipples, yes. usually it results because of poor latching. And most of the first time mothers experience that. I don't think it's first time mothers. For some it's even, even if you have three, four children. They still struggle on you latching. They still struggle <laughs> with the painful nipples and cracked nipples. Yes, cracked nipples, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is one problem, the latching issue. The other one is also how you how often do you breastfeed the baby, because uh, most most of the time you find the mother only knows that they should breastfeed the baby because the baby has cried, mm. so they will wait until the baby cries mm. for them to breastfeed. When that is not the case, mm. they should breastfeed the baby on demand because you see, especially newborn babies sleep for a very long time. Mm and they may not wake as often as possible to yeah. breastfeed. Mm -hmm. So the milk, uh, the breast will fill up with milk, and the mother, if the mother stays with that milk for a long time, it can bring problems. So those are things that she needs to know so that she's prepared, she ha she, she's taught to express, mm -hmm. um, so that she's able to, if the breast is full and the baby is not able to finish or the baby takes long to breastfeed, mm -hmm. she expresses the breast milk, mm -hmm. yes. So we also have a category of mothers Milk production, Nikidongo. Mm -hmm. Even if you take five flasks of Uji and uh, three plates of Jahe, you still have. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, are those things real? I'm at Nakulanga too because we're Africans and we are forced to take uh, like five flasks in a day, ya Uji, and then Jahe, Ikuapo, and then Kuna Supu. And then kunaingine ni meskiata supu ya ngamia is very effective yeah. these days. <laughs> yeah. what, what can a mother do or are those things true in the first place if you have kidogo milk? Okay, so uh, we need to assess because most of the time with my experience is psychological. The mother feels or thinks uh, the milk is not enough when actually it hmm. is enough. Yes. So there are two things that you, uh, as, a, as a nutritionist, I'll look out for, mm. for me to conclude that the milk is not enough. Yes. So one, it's not even about the quantity. Mm. It's about how the baby, the, the response of the baby. If the baby is feeding and the baby is full, mm -hmm. that milk is adequate. Mm -hmm. If the baby is able to breastfeed on demand and they actually get full, that milk is adequate. Number two, if the baby is adding weight, Mm -hmm. For newborns uh, below six months, at least 20 grams every day mm -hmm. is, um, is recommended or is, is, is a, a good sign to show that that milk is adequate. So if the baby is not adding weight, because this baby is supposed to go to the clinic mm -hmm. for growth monitoring every month. Yes. And one of the things that is monitored is weight. Mm -hmm. So if uh, during birth, for example, a baby was born with three kilos they, and then at six weeks, they have not added any weight, or even they have lost it, or they have added very little weight, mm. less than uh, like less than half a kilo. Mm -hmm. I will now start questioning uh, how the mother is breastfeeding. Is the baby getting full? Is the milk adequate? So mm -hmm. those are the two things you, that you can we can use to conclude. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, most of the time, mothers think the baby is not getting enough because of the baby crying. Mm -hmm. Newborns are known to cry, especially the first uh, three weeks. Mm -hmm. They cry a lot, whether it's a boy or a girl. They cry a lot. And then there are those I, that... But there are those who cry more than others. <laughs> there are those who cry more than others because <laughs> of... <laughs> yeah, because of a condition called colic. Yeah, because I think I have been there and I know the experience. Why? Yes. It can be really traumatizing at some point, especially yeah. if it's a firstborn and they come and decide to cry. And you're saying the condition is colic? Yes, there is, there is colic. Mm. But before now we conclude this is colic, usually mm. in the first three weeks, this mm. baby, remember this baby is coming from a comfort 
environment where yeah. they were just uh, held up together. Mm. There was no so much disturbance. No, the baby has been born. They are trying to adapt. Mm. There is light, there is air, there is cold, there is the, the sun, there is noise, there is mm. the touch and all that. So the baby is trying to adapt. And sometimes the baby can be cranky mm. and baby cries. Mm. And that is normal. So this that does is, not determine that you have no milk? The yes, crying. yes. In the first three weeks, that is, the baby even sleeping, sometimes it's, it's difficult. You find most of the mothers get sleep deprived in the first three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I tell them that's normal. And once the baby starts adapting, the baby now will start sleeping for longer periods mm -hmm. and breastfeeding until they are able to finish the breast milk, in, uh, even in both breasts. Mm -hmm. But before then, the baby is just adapting. Now, after three weeks, if the baby continues to cry and they're inconsolable, whatever you do, the baby is not able to be consoled. That is what we call colic. And colic um, usually happens in some babies because the baby's gut is very immature. And they are, uh, when they start feeding, the, the, the gas, you know milk is high in lactose, breast milk is high in lactose. And lactose, when it's broken down in the intestine, it forms gas. And that gas can be trapped. If the baby is not able to pass that gas mm -hmm. properly, it will be trapped in the intestines. Mm -hmm. And because the intestines are so much immature, they become very painful. Mm -hmm. Even if you have bloating, you mm -hmm. feel pain. Yeah. So that's what the baby is going through. And the only way to communicate is crying. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the baby will keep crying. And now we cannot stop breastfeeding because of that, because it's a normal process and it ends. Once the, the intestines of the baby will be mature by the, the third month, mm -hmm. usually beyond that month, if the baby continues to cry now, the doctor can assess what else. Mm -hmm. But before then, uh, you, we tell the mother, just practice things that can help um, remove the gas from the baby's gut because the gut is so immature, it's not able to expel the gas on its own. Mm -hmm. So you can burp the baby after every feed make sure the baby uh, has burped. Mm -hmm. You can practice the what we call cycling movements on the legs. You, you you lift the baby's legs and you do like a cycling movement. When the baby's lying yes, down? Yes, yes. Oh. You lift their legs up, then you do cycling movements. You massage their tummy. You, know, you wrap their tummy in circular motion, massaging gently. That one will help release the gas. And also, sometimes also they, they, they can be, it can be, uh, what you call a uh, poop. Mm. The baby is not also able to pass the poop, so mm. it's trapped in there and it becomes so painful and uncomfortable. Mm. So all those things can help uh, the baby's gut to release the gas and release the poop. Mm. So those are some of the things that we can help the baby. Uh, I really discourage on so many products being sold in the market claiming they can help with colic. Yeah. Most of the time they don't work. Yeah, so. most of the time they don't work mm. because this is a physiological problem, not so much like a disease or something. Mm. And then also encourage the mother to have someone to help her. Because you can imagine the baby is crying during the day, the baby is crying during the night, that can stress the mother a lot. Mm. So the mother should have someone to help her so that someone can hold the baby and the mother can sleep. Mm. So if it's in during the night, uh, the, the daddy, you can do shift, want to sleep uh, for a certain number of hours, they are done to hold the baby mm -hmm. and hold the baby away, maybe in the sitting room and the mother sleeps. If it's during the day, the nanny can help or a friend can come and help hold the baby so that the mother can sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this stress, eh, can it cause the milk to reduce? Yes. So when it comes to milk production, because it's a, also a natural process, uh, usually milk production is influenced by hormones. Mm. There are usually two hormones mm -hmm. that, um, that influence milk production when some mother gets a baby. Mm -hmm. One of them is what we call the prolactin hormone. Mm -hmm. Prolactin hormone is what enables the synthesis or the biosynthesis of milk in the breast cells, in the, what we call the, the milk duct or the alveoli, the cells of the breast, mm. the milk to be processed there. Then the other one is called uh, oxytocin. Oxytocin is what helps the milk to come out. Mm. So there should be a balance. There. there should be a balance of those two hormones. So a mother that is not producing adequate, um, adequate breast milk, most of the time it's because of there is a problem with the, those two hormones mm. and nutrition. Mm. Remember, I always say, uh, nature does not do um, nature does not give 
poor quality product unless there's an interference. Mm -hmm. So there's the nutrient that are supposed to be contained in the breast milk. Mm -hmm. So if the mother is lacking some of those nutrients from the body, the body will, will rather produce small but high quality. That's what it will do. So you find most of the mothers, due to poor nutrition, they have a malnutrition in deficiency, especially vitamins and minerals. Mm. If they have a problem with vitamins and minerals, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin B, yeah? If those are not available or they, she's not consuming adequate uh, of those, the milk, the, milk can, the milk production can be less. Mm. Then when it is a, a stressing environment, mm. If the environment is very stressing for the mother, the, that will affect the hormones, the prolactin levels will go down, so the mother will not produce adequate milk. Mm. The other one is uh, the frequency of breastfeeding. The more the mother breastfeeds, the more the breast milk is produced. Is it so? Yes. Okay. Because you're telling the body there is high demand, so the body will try to keep up with that demand. So I tell the mothers, try as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If the baby is sleeping for long hours, mm -hmm. at least every two hours, just express the breast milk. Mm -hmm. Or if the baby is able to breastfeed every two hours, the better. If they are not able to express the breast milk. So when you communicate to the body that there is demand, the body will continue producing a lot of breast milk. Mm -hmm. The other one is also genetical. Mm -hmm. We are not all the same, women are not the yes. same. There are women who produce a lot of milk Mm -hmm. and there are others who produce little milk, but the both of them, that milk is adequate for the baby. The same way we have animals, especially the dairy animals, mm. we have those animals, the breeds that have a lot of milk and the breeds that produce little milk, but the, the milk is adequate for their young ones. Mm -hmm. It's the same with the women, mm. okay? There are women who produce a lot of breast milk and there are women who produce not so much but this, the, both of them, when they breastfeed their baby, it's adequate. The baby is adding the correct amount of weight. Mm. There's one producing so much, they have to keep expressing and store in the freezer. They fill a whole freezer. And there's this other one, they don't have any left to express and store. The baby is finishing all of mm -hmm. it. But they, it's adequate because the baby is growing healthy mm. and the baby is adding weight the right way. Mm. So both of them is okay. So we are not all the same. So those are some of the things that can affect that. So besides the genes and, uh, of course, what you eat and the frequency of breastfeeding, mm -hmm. hormones and s stress management, sometimes they say the quality, not quality really, quality of milk, yes, produced mm. is so much dependent on what you eat. Yes. So if you eat njahe, for example, must be zito. Mm -hmm. If you take chocolate, only black chocolate, your milk is a little bit thin. Let me use mm -hmm. that thin. Mm -hmm. Is that really going to have the same nutritional value as the one producing the thick, quote unquote, milk? So, <laughs> when we talk in those terms, um, when you say breast milk is thick and another one is thin, mm. what are we talking about? Mm. Are we talking about the fat content? Or are we talking about the lactose content? Because those are the two major energy mm -hmm. pro, uh, energy sources of breast milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So usually, uh, in scientifically, we look at the quality, the content, the fat content. You will find in a hundred ml mm -hmm. that mother who produces a lot of breast milk in a hundred ml they have less fat content compared to a mother who produces as uh, less milk. Mm. So if you take that mother producing less milk and the other one producing a lot of milk, 100 ml of each, the fat content varies. Mm. So the one that is producing a lot, the baby will get more milk to, co to cover the, the energy requirement. This one producing less milk, with just a little uh, milk, the baby is also getting adequate, uh, adequate energy for their growth. Mm. So those are, so nutrition may not really influence that because that is genetical. However, so even if you took uh, all the soups in the world, no, yeah, it will not really interfere with, with the here. content. Yes, it will not interfere <laughs> with the quality of the milk. However, mm. uh, during breastfeeding, the fluid content, the fluid uh, needs of a mother, 
are doubled. Mm. So the mother should take a lot of fluids. Mm. So that way you find will maybe encourage them to take soups, to take tea, to take porridge, to mm. take that because mm. to take water because they need a lot of fluid because breast milk is fluid. Mm. So they need to drink a lot of fluid. Mm. These others that we say like the njahe, like the um, the, the soup yeah. and all that, it's the protein content. Mm. Because breast milk is also a protein uh, medium. So it's the protein content. And once uh, you get the, uh, a mother well nourished, they're able to produce adequate breast milk for the baby. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to amount of milk, really it's the hormone that will determine. Mm. And when you eat the foods, those foods are supporting the balancing the, the, the hormonal balance because jahe is known. Jahe is not just for mothers who are breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Even someone with issues with um, hormonal problems, they will get help. Oh. Yes, because it's um what you call? <laughs> yeah because it's a uh, um it's it promotes the female hormones. It's a pro what do you call those uh, no, not just jahe, even kunde. Oh. The the cow peas, the pigeon peas, mm -hmm. those grains, they are once one they are high in protein, two, they are also um, I'm forgetting the scientific name. They they stimulate or they promote mm -hmm. the production of female hormones. So they are good for women, not just a breastfeeding mother. And that is why you you, you get that effect when the mother eats those grains, they get the they get them they, they stimulate a production of more milk. Not directly that the njahe is stimulating the production mm. of milk. It's because njahe is supporting the body yeah. to produce more prolactin mm. to synthesize more milk. Okay. Yes. Okay. So even women who are not breastfeeding and have got hormonal yes. issues, those njahe's and whatever can help solve yes. the problem. Yes. Okay. We are also learning something. Yeah. And also there the are those. Sorry. There are also those foods that are anti mm. those hormones mm. you also need to remove them okay yeah ah, yeah sometimes the assumption is that if your milk production is little you can supplement from a nutritional point of view okay let me explain supplements mm -hmm. some are told you can do goat milk mm -hmm. but dilute it mm -hmm. cow milk dilute it or go for the for the formulas that we have in the market, mm -hmm. from a nutritional point of view, what is your what is your take on that? Yeah, uh, usually it's called mixed feeding. Uh -huh. You're breastfeeding the baby yes. and giving something yes. else other than breast milk. Yeah. Uh, that is mixed feeding, and it is really discouraged. Mm. It's really discouraged because, as I said, for mm. for someone to for us to conclude that this no milk, milk at all, we have gone a very the baby is now like four months because we've been trying to fix the nutrition, we have fixed the stress, we have fixed your hormone issue. So usually, and these things work. Mm. So unless a mother has a serious medical condition that the doctor will confirm now, mm. here, there is no, we need to do something about this baby. Because it's not, we don't just look at the mother, we look, actually the first person we look at is the baby. Is the baby adding weight? Mm. Is the baby growing healthy? Is the baby getting full? If all those are met, then it, the quantity doesn't matter. But when now it comes to supplementing, mm. uh, it is discouraged. Because when, once you start adding other milk for the baby, there are two things that can happen. One, the baby will stop breastfeeding or the baby will dislike breast milk mm. and they will now want to take what you're introducing. That is one. Number two, I would really be worried about the nutrition value of the milk or whatever you're giving the baby. Mm. Because remember human milk is specifically made by nature to feed a human baby. Mm -hmm. Goat milk is specifically made to feed a baby goat, a kid. <laughs> Cow milk is specifically made to take care of the calf. These three animals are different. The human baby, the, the goat baby, and the cow baby, those three are very different. They have different nutrition needs. Mm. And also, remember a baby is a foundation of an adult. Yes. These three, when they grow up, when they become adult, they have different functions. Mm -hmm. There's one example I love using a lot. Mm -hmm. The calf will not need to go to school to learn. Mm. 
they will not need to talk, yes. to speak, to potty train. Mm. So when you start giving cow's milk to the baby, to a human baby, who needs to speak, who needs to <laughs> go to school and excel? What are you giving the cow the responsibility of raising a human baby? What do you want this baby to become when they grow up? Because the calf is growing up to become a cow. What do you want the human baby to become? You see? Mm. So the nutrition value of this, of animal milk, is very different. And what is usually recommended is, especially for babies whose mothers are deceased, we give infant formula mm. because it has been modified. Mm. Not that it is similar to breast milk. Nothing can mm. be, you cannot, human beings cannot make anything similar to what nature provides. Mm. But you can, it can be modified to suit, to support the healthy growth of this baby. Mm. Okay, and usually for this we give it to babies when the mother is dead because in our country mortality, maternal mortality is very high. Mm. You hear a mother died at childbirth and all that. So those babies do not need to be subjected to cow's milk and to goat milk and all that. They can benefit from the infant formula, the modified animal milk because infant formula is made from cow's milk. Mm. It's just modified so that the nutrition value is close to breast milk. That is one. Uh, the other one is the, the danger of supplementing is also sustainability. Infant formula mm. is very expensive. Mm. And uh, before a mother starts to consider that, they also, we also need to look at sustainability because if it is not well used, because there is the quantity that should be given to the baby according to their age, mm. if the mother is not able to provide adequate of that, we will have a risk of malnutrition. Yes. We will have babies with uh, underweight and stunting or failure to thrive because the mother decided to introduce uh, these alternative feeds and the feeds are not adequate. Uh, they are not able to provide adequate mm. amount for that baby. Because remember, below six months, you're feeding the baby on demand. So even if you're using anything else, you're using on demand. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find for infant formula, a baby can exhaust one tin in two or three days. Mm. How, how sustainable is that for that mother? It's expensive. Yeah. Those things are quite They are very pricey. expensive. They are pricey. Mm. The preparation, because you dilute it with water, mm. which water are you using? This is a baby below six months. They are not supposed to be even drinking water in the first place. Mm. So what water are you using? Is it mm. safe drinking water? Mm. The utensils you use, the cleaning of those utensils, you see? So it's a whole complex issue. Mm. So it's usually easy if the mother is alive and yes. healthy yes. it's easy to fix the mother to produce breast milk which is also which which is successful for me my success rate is very high mm. out of 10 mothers who have those issues mm. all of them or maybe one i would say maybe one and that one has a condition mm. that the doctor will need to intervene mm. but usually when you fix some of those things that um, make the maybe the mother not produce adequate milk they are fixable so when it comes now to the baby who has no mother at all, mm. that one now we can talk about supplementing with infant formula. Whole mm. cow's milk, whole goat milk, whether you add water, whether you do, you add whatever you will add, mm. it is not suitable for feeding an infant. Mumeskia, let the child breastfeed and any mother can produce good enough quality milk for their child. Yeah. So I think some of the things we have believed out here are just a lie. Imagine they're just a lie. That, oh, you know, when the baby cries, uh, they're hungry. Mm -hmm. Deal with colic. And I, we have given you a free lesson on how to handle colic. Mm -hmm. I wish my babies were younger now. I'd go and try it with <laughs> them and on them. Because we didn't know that. Yeah. We struggled and we struggled and all that. But we thank God for this opportunity that you're able to learn and you're able to come across some of this content that we are producing. And for sure, they'll make your life a little bit easier through the breastfeeding and taking care of your child, the, that, that journey. So again, we have a little bit of, I don't call it a myth, but I can call it a myth, that uh, when you breastfeed a lot, your boobs will start dropping, they will sag. True or false? That is true, yeah. and that is what they are meant for. Yeah. To sag? Yes. They are meant to sag? Uh, let me explain. 
<laughs> what is the purpose of the, I love using scientific words so that we get the point. Yes. What is the purpose of mammalic grants mm -hmm. in female mammals? The whole purpose is to produce milk to feed their young ones in the first months of life. Remember, exclusive breastfeeding is not only for humans. All mammals exclusively breastfeed their animals for a certain period of time. Gorillas do it for a year. Gorillas and chimpanzees are our cousins in the world. They do it for a year, as we do it for six months. Elephants do it uh, for around eight months. Cows do it, only that cows, the exclusive breastfeeding has really been interfered with by human beings. Mm -hmm. But in the world, a cow would exclusively breastfeed its, yeah, its calf for around six or seven months. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's done by all mammals, including the rats, including the moles, every, every, every mammal mm -hmm. does that. Mm -hmm. So that is number one function of the mammalic grants. Mm -hmm. So when we have that in mind, we will not now start attaching other functions to, the, to our breasts. They are not for beauty, they are not for aesthetic, they are, they, that is the purpose. Mm. So what I tell young mothers is breastfeed your young one without worrying about the sagging of the breast. Because the function of the breast is to feed this baby. Mm. Once you're done breastfeeding, mm -hmm. in this day and age, we shouldn't be worried about sagging breasts because we have technology that can reconstruct breasts. Mm -hmm. Instead of you refusing to breastfeed your baby to preserve the firmness of your breast, save the money that you use to buy the supplement and all this, save that money. Once you, con once you complete feeding your baby, breastfeeding your baby, then you can, you can have reconstructive surgery mm -hmm. if it is such a big issue for you. So whether you breastfeed or you don't, is there a place where the boobs will just naturally give in? Yeah, because, <laughs> yes, <laughs> because the only time a woman has the firm breast is when they are young, when, they are, when their breasts are forming, during adolescence and young adulthood, uh, usually below 25 years, that's when you are likely to find a girl with those firm standing breasts mm -hmm. because they are forming. So when they are forming, they are that firm end. Even, yeah, past that, that muscle starts becoming, relaxing, it starts to relax because again of hormones. Because as you get older, those um, growing hormones wear off. Mm. So now you now be, you're now a woman, you're now ready to, to become a mother. Mm. So your estrogen levels start going up. So estrogen is known to be a hormone that relaxes muscles, not just the breast muscles, all the muscles in your body, including the face, including the hands, including the hips, those muscles will start, will start uh, relaxing, so they will look like they are sagging. Mm. So what is encouraged is, one, the natural way, what I advise young mothers to do, just be physically active, especially when you do your abs, mm. you firm up your abdominal muscles, mm. so they are able to hold your breast Somehow, not so much, but somehow they are, they are able to hold them in place. The other one is when you're physically active, you firm up your muscles, you tone your muscles. So you have more muscle tissue than fat tissue. So you will reduce the rate at which your muscles relax or sag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Okay. So, Omeskia, you breastfeed or you don't? Nature will mm -hmm. take its course. So you better take care of that baby very well. When they need the milk, give them the milk. Yeah. Higher. So now we are at complementary feeding. Mm -hmm. Please explain on this one. Okay. So after six months of now exclusive breastfeeding the baby, mm. breast milk is no longer um, adequate yes. to support the growth rate of the baby. Yes. Remember, during these six months, the baby is supposed to double their weight. So from birth to six months, they're supposed mm. to double their weight. So now at six months, we need to start introducing foods. Mm -hmm. The foods that we're introducing to the baby are the same foods the mother has been eating. eating. Remember we said in our last session that babies learn taste and flavors uh, of foods the mother is eating through the amni amniotic fluid before mm -hmm. they are born and through breast, uh, breast milk when they are breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So whatever the mother has been eating during breastfeeding, the baby already knows. 
So those are the easiest foods to start to, to start introducing to the baby. Mm -hmm. So you start there. But the first foods you give are foods that are mild in taste. Are what? Mild in mild taste. In taste. The, the foods that do not have strong flavors and tastes. Mm -hmm. You don't start with fruit, for example. Oh. You will not start with a fruit. Because fruit is sweet, you don't introduce that. You introduce mild taste like a potato, a banana, something that is bland in taste. That's the first foods you start. That's the first day, the second day you start introducing the foods that are mild in taste. And then maybe after a week, that when now you start introducing the strong flavored uh, foods like the fruits. Even frying the food, I discourage mothers to start with fried foods because they are strong in flavor. Mm. So start frying your baby's food a little bit, uh, like a week after you've started introducing the foods. So this first week, you're making the baby, uh, you introduce the baby to the blunt taste, then now you can start adding uh, one by one. We add gradually one food at a time so that you can see the baby's response in terms of their liking it and in terms of also if they are reacting to it. Mm. However, uh, for you to minimize, because the biggest worry mothers have when introducing foods is allergies. Yes. For you to minimize the, the risk of allergy, mm. those foods you're eating during pregnancy and breastfeeding, those are the foods you should be feeding your baby because they are already exposed mm. to those foods. If you've not been eating fish, for example, during yes, pregnancy yes. and breastfeeding, or you ate it so rarely, don't, uh, don't be quick to give the baby. As much as fish is very nutritious, mm -hmm. don't be so quick to give the baby. So those foods that you eat in your house, those are the foods you... So whatever, will, because now if you've walked a nutrition journey during pregnancy and breastfeeding, you've already been eating the healthy uh, balance for making a baby for the feeding a baby because last time we said you're feeding your baby from conception yes so it's a continuous process so you've been feeding them during pregnancy mm -hmm. we have fed them during uh, exclusive breastfeeding now you're feeding now the baby is now eating on their own so it's the same foods mm -hmm. if you've been eating matoke and beef that is what you're giving the baby when they start eating but supposing i was eating very spicy food if you're eating very spicy food, as I said, now you when, will. When I was expecting. Yes. So the baby, okay, the baby is already exposed, but mm -hmm. immediately when they start eating, you don't start producing, giving those strong flavors mm -hmm. of spices. Mm -hmm. You introduce them gradually. Mm -hmm. You start get giving, uh, adding garlic and ginger and the cinnamons and all that slowly, gradually, mm -hmm. not immediately. Now today the baby is six months. No, you give them the spicy pilau and beef yeah. and all, and stew. Yeah. No, you start gradually. Everything you add gradually. So even if we are adding, I, I'm looking at a woman who had a craving probably for the spicy, uh, deep fried kind of chicken that we buy around, the spicy ones, very spicy ones. And uh, you're saying I can start to introduce my child, or a child can be introduced. Hey, apa nama pun anda je. Okay. Then again, again, <laughs> another one. You are craving probably for sodas. Mm -hmm. So the baby is already, when they were in the womb, they already tasted, could and could, mm -hmm. the soda. So, hey, I'm lost. You are lost because last time we said the unhealthy cravings. Mm -hmm. We deal with them. Ah, yeah, okay. I get it. So if a mother has been craving soda mm. and they have been taking soda, they were not under a nutritionist. Mm. They were on their own. Mm. And that is a very dangerous thing. Because one, even during pregnancy, some of these things trigger diabetes. Mm. There is what we call gestational diabetes. Mm. They can trigger it. And many mothers usually are not aware that they have it and it will end up affecting the baby. So a, ma a pregnant mother that has been working, you know, we are talking about an ideal situation. However, when the ideal situation is not there, now we look at nutrition. If the mother has been eating very unhealthy foods, and now those are the foods now I'm telling her to, those, the foods you've been eating is what you give the baby. Now there we have to look at the nutrition needs of a baby, okay? So you start looking at what the baby needs and those are the foods that you give the baby. 
because it's a very unlikely the mother has been eating all through the unhealthy foods. Okay. At some point, they, even before they got pregnant, maybe because of food aversions and other like that, mothers who don't eat meat at all mm. during pregnancy, mm. they start eating it during breastfeeding. Mm. They start eating, uh, for example, their mothers who hate beans mm. when they are pregnant. Their mothers who cannot stand fried foods, their mothers who cannot stand potatoes, food aversions during pregnancy. So we start rectifying that during breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And then during complementary feeding, it's those foods that they eat at home that we are going to combine to come up with a healthy diet for the baby. Mm -hmm. Usually for children, we don't talk about balanced diet. We talk about adequate nutrition. Mm -hmm. Because at six months, um, babies below five years usually require three to five times more nutrients than adults. Mm -hmm. And not balanced diet. Yes, we don't talk of balanced diet. The, the, the diet can be balanced, but it's not giving the baby adequate nutrition. So we talk about adequate nutrition mm -hmm. in terms of what does the baby require and what are those critical nutrients the baby needs. At six months, the most critical nutrient the baby requires is iron. Mm -hmm. That is one. Because Remember we said the baby is born with adequate iron stores to last them the six months of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So by six months, the iron is depleted. Yes. Iron is very critical for brain formation. Mm -hmm. Anemia implicates brain cell formation for babies. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, to start looking at iron-rich foods. And the baby should eat this on a, very, on a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Then we go to vitamin A. Vitamin A is depleted again because they have been born with it. And now during breastfeeding, they, have, uh, they get through breast milk, but now look at the demands. The baby is forming the eyes, the baby is developing their immunity because now they have started uh, being introduced to foods. At six months, the baby can sit down and is able to grab things around and put in their mouth. So we need the immunity to be uh, well developed. So they need a lot of vitamin A, vitamin C, they need a lot of vitamin B for the brain development. They need a lot of essential fatty acids, the ones we call omega-3 and omega-6. The baby also requires a lot of energy because they are growing. So all this, so we have to combine, we have to come up with a diet that is going to give adequate nutrition for the baby so that we make sure they are not going to be deficient of these nutrients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, okay. So you're saying the baby can eat what the mother is eating six months going forward. Yes. But then again, we have... Again, I don't know that it's a myth. Mm -hmm. The baby cannot swallow hard food. Yes. So what do we do? We modify the food. And we blend it, we blend it, and it becomes slimy, becomes soup, yeah. becomes like juice. <laughs> and it, it is food. Yeah. So <laughs> what you're trying to tell us is we should avoid that route, if I'm hearing you right. Yes, blending, OK. Uh, it depends with what you're blending. I'm talking of foods, because people get ugali and the soup, yeah, ugali, yeah, nyama. And then they blend, yeah. Okay. Usually, I discourage blending baby food to very smooth, mm. like juice. Mm. Yeah, it shouldn't be smooth, mm. because remember, teeth development is stimulated by a chewing uh, oh. reflex. Where? Oh, mm -hmm. You see, nowadays mothers are worried. My baby is one year; they have not grown teeth. Mm. What's happening? Because teeth, the baby needs to. You need to stimulate some of these. You know, it's nature. It's a natural process, and yeah. it's stimulated. Mm -hmm. You have to, some of these things have to be stimulated. So, don't make the baby's food smooth. What I say, if for example you ha you are cooking beans for the baby, mm -hmm. and uh, bananas for example, and meat, you can have the meat minced. You don't have to blend it. You can have the you can mash the beans and you can mash the bananas. If it is vegetables, just cut into small, fine pieces. So you don't have to blend. Blend blend those things that are really complex, like, for example, maybe nuts. Yes. You can blend the nuts, and not into a smooth paste, but um, crush it. Instead of blending, just crush it. Like you blend for a, a sec of 30 seconds or one minute. Mm -hmm. Just crush it into small pieces. Mm -hmm. Don't make it smooth. Yeah. So this time we've introduced these foods, eh? do we simply say, hooray, me and breastfeeding, see you next season? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why it's called complementary feeding. Complementary feeding means you're complementing breast milk. Mm -hmm. It's done from six months to two years. Mm -hmm. You're complementing breast milk. The baby will continue breastfeeding 
but now you're adding family foods. Years. Yes. We need to underline that. Yes, up to the age of two years. Up to two years. As we used to breastfeed, unaendea stool, unaka hapa chini, unambia mom, come. Your mother sits. So I think we did more than two years. Yeah. <laughs> you see? And that is very important. And one thing mothers need to understand why, it's because brain development of a baby, 80% is developed up to the age of two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After two years, very little brain cells are formed. So the majority of the brain cells intelligence and all the abilities of a human being are formed during that time. Mm -hmm. And breast milk carries those important nutrients that form brain cells. Mm -hmm. they are, we, are, we call them fats, phospholipids. Mm -hmm. And they are, only, they are very high only in human milk. That is why I say it's only the human that is more intelligent than other animals because of the content, because of their brain cell. And to form those smart brain cells, you need these phospholipids. Mm. So the baby should continue breastfeeding, not because breast milk is um, making them full, mm -hmm. all, but because of that content of the fat that you cannot find in any other. It is not, yes, it's only, yes, it's only found in breast milk, mm. in human milk. Mm. You not find it in cow's milk, you not find it in meat, you not find it in eggs. It's only specific for human milk. Mm. That way it's encouraged, continue breastfeeding your baby up to the age of eight, uh, two years yeah. so that you support the healthy brain and development of the baby. Mm. Yes. So, so the minute you introduce the food, it does not mean you drop the breastfeeding, mm. you continue, but I guess you can continue past two years. Yeah, just the... continue. It's <laughs> if you're able to continue. Actually, ideally, in nature, ideally, mm. breastfeeding was supposed to continue until the baby removes the first tooth. Mm. When the first tooth is comes out, that is around the age of six years. Mm. When the first tooth comes so out, you mean the baby, the milk teeth are removed when they come out. They start coming out around six years. Okay. That is now in a natural, so if you are in the world, like our gorilla mm -hmm. friends, we would, we would be required, for example. To continue up to us. You would stop breastfeeding when the mm. first tooth comes out. Mm. Okay. And that is around six years, because that is when now, when the t milk teeth start coming out, is when now maybe, now the baby is, you can win off the baby. Mm. Yeah, that is like what we would call ideal. Mm. However, because of now science came and now we are able to study human development and all that, the most important time to breastfeed your baby mm. is up to two years. Yes. Beyond, not so, if one wants, it's okay, but the most critical time is two years because of the function of the breast milk mm. in brain development. Mm. Yeah. So there are times when um, a mother is not able to do the two years, probably they they conceive along the journey. Do they stop the breastfeeding because they are expectant with probably the second or the third child? Or can the two go together? Yeah, okay, it's perfectly safe for a pregnant mother to continue breastfeeding. Mm. The only thing I'll be worried about is if they are able to consume adequate nutrition to support the two, to support pregnancy demands and breastfeeding demands. Yes. If the, it's the mother is able to eat well and they are having adequate nutrition, it's perfectly safe and okay for the mother to continue breastfeeding. Okay. Yeah. So as we wind up, we have a few minutes. Let's assume we've hit the six months and now we have to do the complementary feeding. Let's do, for example, day one for us. Uh, give us just a sample of where we can begin. Now that you say it, we don't begin with the fruits, mm -hmm. so that we can know at what point we will introduce the fruits. And then you said we can do this for at least a week. Do we continue with the same? Like for example, if I do a potato, potato Monday, potato Tuesday, potato Wednesday, week in Aisha, and then I bring mm -hmm. a banana Monday of that. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Usually. Um, you start with one one product, mm -hmm. then uh, I usually say you start with one product, then you gradually add other products slowly. Mm -hmm. So if today, for example, today is the first day I'm feeding the baby, yes. maybe I can mash a potato mm -hmm. and give the baby. You remember at six months, the baby is still breastfeeding yes. a lot. Yes. So 
the baby only have two tablespoons in one meal. It's good to, to, to highlight you that. You see, yes. just two tablespoons, mm -hmm. and then and that you will do maybe twice a day. You do in the morning and in the evening. So the first day you're not cooking uh, lunch, supper, dinner for the baby, no. <laughs> the baby will continue breastfeeding, and if it's a baby that the mother is going to work, you continue expressing breast milk for the baby. Mm -hmm. Then you you now introduce maybe two tablespoons of a mashed potato that day. Mm -hmm. Then the following day, you can do the same sweet potato, but now you can add some vegetables, for example. Mm -hmm. Then you can do this for three days. Mm -hmm. Then now you can introduce something else. Mm -hmm. Now when the baby eats three, uh, uh, the potato for three days, you will, that is adequate for you to tell if the baby likes it and also if there's any, any reaction. reaction. Mm -hmm. Then now you can bring something else like rice. Mm -hmm. You can now bring rice, you boil the rice, you make it soft for the baby. Now you can, you can now add maybe a, a, a pumpkin mm -hmm. or carrot or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then you do again the same way for three days. Then you introduce something else. Mm -hmm. Now you can do maybe mashed uh, beans with, um, with ugali or beef, minced beef with ugali. You would do it for three days. But by, by usually in two weeks time, in actually in 10 days, in 10 days Stabilized yes, stabilized. now the baby can eat whatever you're eating. Mm. However, what I say is the baby cannot be waiting for lunch to be cooked for, for the whole family for them to eat. Remember, babies have high nutrition needs, yes. not high food needs. They don't, they don't, babies don't eat a lot of food. Mm. They need a lot of nutrients yes. compared to an adult. Yes. So the baby will not be waiting for lunch like others. Mm. So you have to have a feeding plan. Yes. And when you're doing a feeding plan, we plan the way the baby is, um, the way the, it's called responsive feeding. Mm -hmm. We feed the baby depending on how hungry they, are become, they, they, they become. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn when your baby is hungry, mm -hmm. you feed them. So you plan the feeds that you're going to give the baby that day because the baby might be hungry before lunchtime. Mm -hmm. For example, you decided now in the morning the baby will take, for example, the baby is going to have, for example, a banana mm. or porridge. Kenya, here we do porridge a lot. Mm. Maybe you give the baby porridge in the morning. The baby may not wait for lunch. Maybe after two hours at 10 or 11, they may be hungry. Yes. So you need to have that feeding plan. Like after this meal, what is next? Mm. And what is next? Mm. The baby may not want to be, the baby may not want to eat when you want them to eat because they are not yet hungry. Mm. They might be hungry after even four hours. So you need to have that plan in mind because you're feeding the people resp responsibly. Mm. So I usually say babies do not need a meal plan and do not need a table, timetable. You know the way mothers, especially working mothers, they're the ones who have a lot of problems with feeding <laughs> babies. In the morning, give the baby this. After two hours, give the baby this. After another two hours give the baby this. So the baby has like six things to eat during the day. Mm. And when the mother comes from work, the baby did not eat. You start quarreling your nanny. Yes. The, this nanny is not taking care of the oil of my baby. Even they didn't give them fruit. They didn't give them the milk. They didn't, the baby did not finish food. You need to train the nanny responsive feeding. Mm -hmm. You train the nanny responsive feeding. You have a feeding plan that the next, when the baby eats this, the next meal, that is whatever time the baby will be hungry, this is what they will eat. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why the baby's food needs to be highly nutritious. Mm -hmm. So that even if they are eating two tablespoons, or even if they eat three tablespoons, that those three tablespoons are high in nutrients. Mm -hmm. Because the baby, it is very unlikely that child at six, especially below nine months, they're going to eat five times in a day. And you want them to continue breastfeeding. No, you know how we used to feed them? Me on behalf of others, eight porridge, 10 fruits, 12 lunch, two milk, four porridge, seven food. So those are more than? That is too much for the baby and it is very unhealthy. And the babies who are fed that way, <laughs> most of us who are fed that way have eating disorders. But, but uh, you've come across such cases. Yes. Yes. That yeah. is why you're finding a lot of eating disorders in children who are fed that way. Mm -hmm. Because they do not, they have not mastered their body to eat when they need to eat. Mm. 
Remember healthy eating nowadays even for all of us adults. You're only supposed to eat when you, when you need to eat. Why are you having supper, breakfast? You're having breakfast, 10 o'clock, lunch. Because, you see, it is started there. Yes. So they were, pro you see, you are programmed from the <laughs> early age that you're supposed to be eating every two hours, yes. every two hours. It is so unhealthy. That's why we have eating disorders. We have a lot of food problems. When you're seeing babies with overweight, babies with diabetes, mm. and all these conditions that people are getting even at a very early age, you find someone with hypertension at 40. It's because of that, that that's an eating disorder. So only let the baby eat when they are hungry. It's mm. called responsive feeding. You're responding to their hunger. So for you as a mom, only plan the meals. That when the baby gets hungry, this is the meal they eat. The next time they are angry, this is the meal they eat. It's called a responsive feeding. So don't do meal plans, don't do stop with the timetables, practice responsive feeding. Okay. I hope we've learned something. For me, if I knew this before, I would not subject my children to eating six to seven times yeah. in a day. Mm. Uh, on their behalf, since they will also be watching this, I say sorry. <laughs> and also on behalf of many others who did what I did, I think we acted out of ignorance. And uh, yeah. we are grateful for having such content and people who have a wealth of experience in this field to be able to give us insights on how to go about it. Knowing when to feed your baby and knowing when your baby is hungry, that simply tells you that it's a journey. Yeah. It's not something you master in a day because many times I think mothers get frustrated because I am not sure I'm getting this right. Mm -hmm. But we are simply here to say it's a journey. You will make mistakes here and there, but keep learning, yeah. but feed your child very, very well. So the last one as we finish, eh, water, they say introduce water mm -hmm. to the child. At what point to introduce the water? Because already we have food here, we have porridge, yeah. we have all these things. So when do we introduce water? Yes, very important. Mm -hmm. And thank you for raising that up. Because it's something that is so much um, underrated, yes. giving the baby water. So once you start feeding the baby food, now they need water. Mm -hmm. So you need to give the baby water regularly. Do we add glucose? Do not add anything. The water should only be safe and clean for the baby to drink. Mm -hmm. So don't add anything. The other thing, because babies, when they are... When they are that young, they are not able to communicate thus. Mm. So I advise mothers, keep water at their site. Mm. So that when they want, when they feel like, they can signal. yes, they will go for the bottle and drink or they will cry for it or they will, some of them communicate they want water because water is really forgotten. Mm. And a baby who is dehydrated or a baby who is not getting enough water will have problems with appetite. I've gotten mothers with seven months old babies who are not eating at all. And the problem is dehydration. The baby is not getting adequate water. Mm -hmm. So I tell the mother, give the baby water a lot. Mm -hmm. And in two, three days, they call me. By the way, it has worked. The baby is now eating well. Mm -hmm. It was dehydration mm -hmm. because they forget. Yeah. And you cannot shed your water because yes. dust comes. Um, it can strike at any time. Another thing is also you need to consider the baby's stomach is very small. Mm. So if they are drinking water, remember, the water will also occupy the stomach. Mm. So you may not uh, expect the baby to drink water and immediately after you want to feed them. Mm. So you need to really have a, an, a, a regular interval at how you give the baby water. Mm. But the best because babies are human, babies are not small adults, they are small human beings. Mm. They will, when they are thirsty, they, you will see the signs. Yeah. Just put water at sight and they will they will always reach out or they will cry for it. So or even you, it will be reminding you, oh, by the way, if the baby has not drunk water, yes. then you give the baby water. Mm. Yes. So you say we add nothing because yeah. sometimes we're in the habit of adding some glucose, kidogo, maybe to make it tasty, warm <laughs> or room temperature. It's, it's not necessary. So do we have it warm or at room temperature? Yeah, room temperature is okay. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to warm water, I'm sure all of us here, when you're thirsty and you take warm water, do you get quenched? Mm -hmm. Then don't do that to the baby. It's a small human being. Okay. <laughs> Give the baby water that as long as it's not very cold from the fridge, mm -hmm. it's room temperature, yeah, give the baby. Because now if you give warm water, they will not get quenched. 
so the problem will be there. They will just be passing P, they will be peeing, peeing, and the dust is still there. The same way you feel is the same way they feel. So give them water that can quench their dust. So don't add anything. And do not replace water with other fluids. Don't give babies juice, don't give babies uh, tea. Just give plain water, yes. Wow, I actually wish during our days this info was available because I'm also learning a lot, mm -hmm. even way past that, <laughs> that uh, phase of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll surely want to have you back, but for anyone who would want to get you, how can they get you okay. in touch with you? Okay. Mm, uh, they can get me online, um, Kadomi Mutembe on Facebook, on Instagram, mm -hmm. on TikTok, I'm Kadomi, how to make a baby. And I have that uh, how to make a baby series. I'm just communicating to mothers on how you breeze up your baby, how you literally make a baby mm -hmm. from conception all the way to the age of five years. Mm -hmm. uh, my number is 07 uh, six eight zero six three three four six. Probably you can repeat again. Uh, yeah, my number is zero seven six eight uh, zero six three three four six. You can WhatsApp me. You can call me. Um, usually, I provide with a feeding plan. As I said, babies do not need timetables. Babies do not need meal plans. So what I prepare for mothers is a feeding plan, and you can get it at just five hundred shillings. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for. The great info that you've shared and as you said we will have you back again of course for more of this because we need to keep sharing this knowledge keep sharing this info so that we don't walk in ignorance and end up getting frustrated um, and as you take care of that baby kindly remember that the Lord has entrusted you with a gift nurture it take time be present and do that which you have to do because as she says for you to know when the baby is hungry, it is not rocket science. It has to take time. You have to be present to study some of these things. And guess what? The journey is beautiful. So sit back, relax, breastfeed your baby. Wasababu stress in Takata Maziwa. That one is your take home for today. So you have to do it in a relaxed mode. Otherwise, I have so many things that I can a flashback on what she has said, but we have to end it at this point. We truly hope that you've learned something and this will make your life better and easier even as you adjust to taking care of your baby. Otherwise, God bless you. See you next time.